What we're going to talk about in this video is what lower atelectasis of individual lung lobes look like. We'll also briefly go over the causes of atelectasis and symptoms you might see. First things first, atelectasis is the loss of air in a part of the lung leading to collapse of that part of the lung. When this happens in an entire lung lobe, it's called lobar atelectasis and has a consistent pattern on chest x-rays. The major types of atelectasis include resorption atelectasis, compression atelectasis, microatelectasis or adhesive atelectasis, and finally contraction or cicatrization atelectasis. The most important ones to know are the first two, resorption and compression atelectasis, so these are the ones we're going to talk most about. Just know that microatelectasis is basically a loss of surfactant, and contraction atelectasis is due to fibrotic changes in the lung that cause pore expansion. Resorptive atelectasis is definitely the most common one. The most common types you'll see in this category include post-surgical atelectasis or obstructive atelectasis, such as from a tumor or mucus plug. What happens here is that there's poor exchange of air in parts of the lungs, and the air that's in the lungs gets reabsorbed by the body, leading to the collapse of that lung. So in post-surgical atelectasis, the diaphragm is not functioning, leading to decreased air exchange or air coming into the lungs, and so the remaining air in the lung ends up getting reabsorbed into the body, leading to collapse of the lung. Now in obstructive atelectasis, there's something blocking the air from the lung, and the remaining air just gets reabsorbed into the body, again leading to collapse of the lung. Now compressive atelectasis is intuitive enough, so this means that something such as blood, fluid, or a diaphragmatic hernia compresses a lung lobe to the point that it pushes air out of the lung and the lobe collapses. Now that we're done with that, let's talk about what this looks like. So a patient with atelectasis is obviously going to have some difficulty breathing. They might also have a fever. And depending on how severe the atelectasis is, the patient could have decreased oxygen saturation or even be cyanotic. Now the two signs that are really helpful for identifying atelectasis include shifts in the fissures of the lungs as well as silhouette signs. The fissures will shift toward the direction of the atelectasis because as one lung is collapsing and getting smaller in volume, the other lobe will expand to fill that space. Now let's start as always with the right upper lobe. On the PA, the normal right upper lobe dimension is here. But with right upper lobe atelectasis, the minor fissure shifts up like this, which I'm drawing with the dotted lines, because the right upper lobe is collapsing and decreasing in volume. And the borders of the mediastinum now become silhouetted, which I'm drawing in pink. And so an ex actual example of a right upper lobe atelectasis is here. Now on the lateral, the normal right upper lobe is here. And in atelectasis, both the minor fissure and major fissure borders of the right upper lobe shift inwards, such that a right upper lobe atelectasis would look like this on the right. Next is the right middle lobe. On the PA, the normal right middle lobe dimension is here. But with right middle lobe atelectasis, this border contracts. And you should also have silhouetting of the right heart border. Example of this is here. Now on the lateral, the normal right middle lobe is here. But with, right, with atelectasis, the minor and major fissure that borders the right middle lobe move inwards and look like this on the right. Now for the right lower lobe, on the PA, this is what the normal right lower lobe looks like. And with right lower lobe atelectasis, it collapses downwards and you start to see silhouetting of the right diaphragm. Note here that the right heart border is still visible, and in case you don't remember why this is true, it's because the right middle lobe is the one that's in contact with the right heart border and not the right lower lobe. So this looks like this. On the lateral, the normal right lower lobe distribution is here. And with atelectasis, the oblique fissure border shifts down and back and would look like this. Next, we have the left upper lobe. On the PA, the normal left upper lobe dimension is here. 
With left upper, upper lobe atelectasis, it's a little different than what we've seen before, because instead of a clearly visible shift in a fissure, we'll see a general area of increased opacity where the left upper lobe should be. You can also see silhouetting of the left heart border in mediastinum. And if you look closely, you can see that the left diaphragm is also elevated to fill in for the loss of volume in the left chest. This looks like this here on the right. On the lateral, the normal left upper lobe is here. And with atelectasis, the major fissure shifts inwards to make up for the volume loss, which looks like this. which I'm drawing on the right again. Lastly, we have the left lower lobe. So on the PA, the normal left lower lobe is here. Left lower lobe atelectasis looks like right lower lobe atelectasis, but just on the left side. So here you can see the left lower lobe collapses downwards. And like right lower lobe atelectasis, the left heart border should remain visible because the left heart is not in contact with the left lower lobe. And you'll also see the left diaphragm showing the silhouette sign, which I'm drawing here on the right. On the lateral, the normal left lower lobe is here. And not surprisingly, with left lower lobe atelectasis, the oblique border shifts down and out and ends up looking like this, which is pretty much the same as the right lower lobe atelectasis. Now for the take home points. Atelectasis is the loss of air in the lung, which leads to collapse of parts or even entire lung lobes. The most common causes of Resorption atelectasis include post-op atelectasis and obstructive atelectasis. The most common causes of compressive atelectasis include blood fluid or diaphragmatic hernias. Classic presentation of a patient with atelectasis is post-op patient with fever, difficulty breathing, decreased oxygen saturation, and possible cyanosis. Thank you.